Welcome back. In this lesson, we will apply responsive image optimization with Next.js to the remote images we're bringing in from the Pexels API. When we stopped the last lesson, our images didn't fit inside of our divs too well, and we can see that here. Let's fix that first. Back in the Next.js docs for the image component, we see under width and height that they are required, and we went over the four required attributes, but it says, except for statically imported images, or images with the fill property. So let's consider the fill property for our images inside of those divs. I'll just click fill over here on the right. Now let's look at fill. We can either set it to true or false. So it's a Boolean that causes the image to fill the parent element instead of setting the width and height. So the parent element, which would be our divs, must assign either position relative, position fixed, or position absolute. I'm going to assign position relative. And then by default, the image element inside will be assigned position absolute. And then it says you can set the default image fit behavior to, well, by default, it's going to stretch to fit the container, but you may prefer the object fit contain. However, we're going to use the alternate here, object fit cover, which will cause the image to fill the entire container and be cropped to preserve the aspect ratio that we've given the container. And for it to look correct, we also want to set overflow hidden. So let's go back to VS Code and make those changes. I'm back in VS Code and I'm looking at the image container component. So we want to make some changes here. We're going to remove our width and height of 250. We're going to set fill equal to true, and then we need to apply some more CSS. So the parent, which is our div, needs to be positioned relative. Now we don't need to change the position for the image component inside. That will automatically be set to absolute by Next.js. So after doing that, we do need to apply a couple of other class names that they suggested. Well, at least one. So I'll start with this one. This will be class name equal, and it's going to be object dash cover. And so that gives us that coverage that we want to fill the object up and then we also need to apply that overflow hidden. And I, when I said a second class name, I was actually thinking of up here once again, it needs to be overflow dash hidden for this to look correct. So that's following the directions they gave us right inside of the Next.js docs. Let's save this, open up a terminal window. If you don't have your project running already, type npm run dev, and then we'll go ahead and hold down the control key and click localhost 3000, which should open this up inside of Google Chrome for us. And now our images fit our squares perfectly. So as I scroll down, we have 15 images and the ones that were small, like this one, now fit perfectly. The ones that were large, like most of them, now fit as well. And nothing is overflowing. So the overflow is hidden and it looks great. We even see the rounded corners on each of our squares. So our grid is working out nicely so far. However, let's go ahead and press Control Shift and the letter I to open up DevTools. We'll see we're getting some warnings. We're getting one essentially for each image. And here it says we have an image has fill, but is missing the sizes prop. So we need to add that to improve performance. Next.js is helping us by telling us what we need to do to improve the performance of our image gallery. So let's look at the sizes prop. Back in the Next.js docs, we are looking at the sizes prop for the image component. And the sizes prop is a string that provides information about how wide the image will be at different breakpoints. Also, the value of sizes will greatly affect the performance for images using fill or which are styled to have a responsive size. And that's definitely what we're doing. So the sizes property serves two important purposes. First, the value of sizes is used by the browser to determine which size of the image to download from Next Image's automatically generated source set. And that's important too, because if you look at MDN, it will tell you sizes and source set go hand in hand. And we don't have to define a source set attribute. Next.js automatically generates that. Second, the sizes property configures how Next Image automatically generates 
that image source set. So very important there. Let's scroll down and look at an example. Here they have sizes and it has the string here with the breakpoints. Now this is often hard to figure out or define on our own. So fortunately, I have found a tool that will help us out with that. But first, let's copy what we have here because the tool won't work unless we put in essentially our best guess to begin with. So I'm just copying what's out of this example and we'll go ahead and take this back to VS Code. I'm back in VS Code at our image component and I'm just going to paste in that sizes example that we got out of the documentation. Now, this will help, but it's not accurate. I didn't even really make a guess. I just took what was out of the example, but I have discovered a tool that will help us calculate this when we know we're probably wrong. And this is really kind of hard to figure out on our own. I've never figured out a great way to do it. So let's take a look at that tool. I am at the linter for responsive images, and this is the tool that I'm talking about. Now you can just drag this to the toolbar in your browser. Here I will show mine with Control Shift B, and you can see I've already got it in the toolbar in my browser, but I'll just add it again. It's so simple, you just drag it up and it will be added to your book mark bar essentially or toolbar depends what you call it but it's the same thing so once you have it there you want to go to your next JS image gallery and then simply click that bookmark bar and it begins to run as we see here and soon it's going to give me a report after it reads everything here it's just taking a little bit more time but I think it will finish soon and it will give me the sizes value that I need to put in. Now, one thing about this, of course we had 15 images and it says zero out of 15 passed all the checks. We'll never pass all of the checks because this W descriptor that it checks never matches what Next.js generates for us. So we don't need to worry about that as Next.js will be generating that source set. What we do want is to scroll down below that and find the sizes attribute has to match the width of the image. So here it's saying try using and it's giving us a very long value here. I would have never figured this out on my own. So I'm going to copy all of this and then go control C and now let's go back to VS Code and put this in instead. I'm back in VS Code and I'm just going to highlight what we have in here for sizes and paste in the new value and then once again save the file. So now we have this new value in, we could go ahead and reload our project and rerun that linter if we want to. So you just have to use your back button, go back to the project. It should have loaded and you can check that too. If you go to DevTools, we should check and now, of course, we're not receiving any warning here about using fill without sizes, but let's go ahead and just right click on the first image, choose inspect, and from there, we should see that Next.js has generated a fairly large source set for this image as well. If I drag this down, and here we go, we scroll up. This large source set has been generated by Next.js. We did not put that in our code manually, and that's because we provided some good sizes information for Next.js to work with. And so now it's optimizing four different breakpoints on its own. So Next.js does a lot of image optimization for us, and that is great. So now let's go ahead and close this out. We could run that linter one more time. Again, we won't pass its test for any image because of that descriptor error. But besides that, let's see if we have any issue with sizes. And no, it doesn't mention anything about the sizes. And of course, it does a report for each image, but they're basically all the same. So we don't have any further issue with our sizes attribute. It has been calculated accurately. Let's make one final CSS change here inside of our image component before we are finished with this lesson. I just need to add group to the parent element here. And then in the class name for the image component itself, I want to add group-hover and then set the opacity to 75. So now when we mouse over the images, and I'll go back to Chrome where we can see this, when we mouse over the images, we'll get that nice little dip in opacity on every image here inside of those parents. So that's how we do that with Tailwind CSS, and it gives a nice little effect here. So in the next lesson, we're going to learn one more thing about the Next.js image component, and that's how when we load the images, we can show a blurred image first as a placeholder before our actual image comes into place.